Hey, it's Pitmaster here. I forget what I was going to say. Okay. What's up? Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, John, good to see you. You caught me off guard. Okay. It's time to go. I was talking about my stepdad. But anyway, um, we're going to talk about Sensei... Not Sensei. We're going to talk about UFC 231. Holloway versus Ortega. Whew. Man. You got it out. So much going on up here. Holloway versus Ortega. Many other good fights, and it was a good card. It really was. It was a pay per view card, so 65 bucks. So I hope it's good, and it was. It delivered, um, and we're going to talk about it right now. Usually, these home, these fights where they go away, they got a lot of fighters from that country. I guess Canada's not that far away. There are a couple Canadian fighters. They didn't. The card wasn't stacked with Canadians. There's, I think, Hakeem is from like. Uh, he's from, they don't really claim Canada. He claims like uh, Nigeria or something. Um, but I think he lives in Canada. So even if, even if they live in Canada, they don't claim it. They, he claims Nigeria. There's, that's not good. Can't, something's up with Canada. And then I think, who was the other car? The other guy. I think there was one other guy that was from Canada, but on at least the main card, Hardly any of them were from Canada, so um, I know uh, Gunner was from Iceland, and yeah, it was, it was like a non-Canada card. Maybe the undercard was more Canadian. Maybe, maybe, but whatever. Okay, let's go right from the top down. Top down? Yeah. Bottom up, top down? Top down. Okay. Let's go with go. this. Let's go with this. Okay, first of all, Holloway showed why he is... Um, the, uh, the best, the best, uh, featherweight, um, of all time, maybe. I think, I think, I think you can honestly say right now, he is the best featherweight of all time. Yeah. I mean, I, well, who's, I'm thinking, I don't think anyone could top him. So, okay. My, Max Holloway is the, is the best featherweight of all time. Now he didn't, wasn't he going to go up and fight? Lightweight, he was gonna fight Khabib or something. I think they talked about it. But I think he well Holloway missed most of this year. Yeah, from injuries some, or whatever. Some weird like head thing where he was talk, slurring, and they said he was, they said he was punch drunk. They say that about me. Who da, who dares say? But that you know person? what though, some of us from Hawaii, um, maybe that's just the way we talk. But Holloway is not punch drunk. Um, but I think he should stay at forty-five. Um, he can just he can he can just run 30, 45 for a while. The thing about this fight was it showed a lot of toughness for uh, Brian Ortega, but it also showed it brought him down off the pedestal. I mean, I think people thought he was unbeatable, unbreakable. He was gonna he was just gonna run through everyone. He was favored in this fight even. So I think that just proved that even though he didn't like show that much depth of his skill, he showed a lot of uh, a lot of uh, highlight reel stuff. But he didn't really he hasn't been there long enough. But people just the, the hype was there. So now I think the hype he's still he's still really good, tough as nails, but. I think I think he's dropped down to human status after Max Holloway was that was able to avoid almost all of his takedowns, get out of a submission or two, early submission, but early submission or two, and he was able to get up off the bottom pretty effortlessly. And fourth, he was able to his cardio. He outworked Ortega. I mean, Ortega was tired at the end of this fight. And Holloway looked like he gets another round in him, no problem. So Holloway has crazy conditioning. I don't know what the hell they do over there in Wainai, um, but uh, that's where he lives, Wainai. Um, but yeah, his conditioning was off the off is off the hook. But I mean, to be honest, for for as action packed as that fight was, Ortega showed a lot of conditioning as well. Um, but it 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 um. It, it brought him down, not not down, but it brought him to human status where 
he's not going to just run through people and submit them, especially someone like uh, Max Holloway. Um, Max and, Holloway really showed the depth of his game, though, because he fought this guy that has submissions, has a ground game, and Max Holloway prevailed decisively. This wasn't a, you know, if this went to a card, this is not a split decision yeah, fight. This, this, this was a pretty been... one-sided... It, I, I think Max Holloway set some records, like the most significant strikes landed in a UFC fight ever in this fight. He hit him so many times, yeah. which which I brought up with you before. He had so many significant strikes, no knockout strikes, but he had so many significant strikes that it was it's kind of a beatdown of yeah. Brian Ortega. It was a beatdown, but what made it not a beatdown and what made it a more exciting fight than a lot of one-sided fights. On paper, this was inclu- uh, incredibly one-sided, but... What made it not as one-sided as it could have been was it didn't look like Holloway was hurting him until like midway through the fourth. Then it would look like he was hurting him more out of fatigue yeah. than his punching power. But with that said, when 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 Max wasn't tired um, and he was getting hit by uh, Brian, it looked like he looked like he he was getting rocked a little. He wasn't like rocked almost out. But his knees buckled more than Brian's did until the end. And I think that was caused by fatigue more than punching power, as opposed to Max in the second round. It looked like he got his knees buckled a couple times and he wasn't tired. So that is punching power. But never shied away from the fight. I mean, that is one thing about... Isn't Max Holloway the one that pointed at the mat? Yeah. Yeah. So he did that too, <laughs> in his own way. This fight. Yeah, I mean, he just said, you know, he kind of he gets caught with one, and he's like, okay, and he just goes in and brawls. But his striking is so precise. It's it's crazy. Medically speaking, this is if this guy, if Brian Ortega comes into the ER, you say that's a beatdown. <laughs> I don't know what you karate guys call it, but medically, a, that was that a beatdown, beat and, yeah. and it wasn't. Just Max Holloway was so impressive. He was. He was. It was uh, It was unbelievable. And uh, one thing he's able to do is because of his height. He wouldn't be able to do this without his height. So with his skill, now you add the height to it, that means he can stay right here out of the punching range. And then as soon as the guy punches, he can follow the punch and land it. If he was a shorter fighter, he could bob and weave and work his way in. But he wouldn't be able to be right there uh, at the end of a punch, and he did that. He did that multiple times against uh, against Brian Ortega. He was like right at the end of his punch, so the punch like came this this close. He was just out of the way of it, but then he would be able to land his right hand. It was usually or right like hand. a three punch combo. There were a lot of combinations Max yeah. threw and landed. I mean, landed multiple strikes in one combination. It was impressive. It was. I think Brian Ortega said he has a broken nose and a broken thumb, and he said he would have died in there. He said, I, I would have just gone back out in round five. He goes, I, he goes, I think the doctor yeah. stopped it. It was a good stoppage, but I would have, you know, he's a warrior. He would have died in there. That's what I was saying. He, he needs was. a, he, his nickname should reflect that. I thought he was, he had a lot of heart. He was willing to come back out again, and he was beaten down and tired. He tried to do one of his jumping submissions yeah, and he was just, just so tired he couldn't yeah he couldn't well, it wasn't really jumping that. submission per se it was a he was trying to pull guard he was trying <laughs> to jump guard just to get it to the ground so it's like jumping guard is like the opposite of a takedown if you're too tired for a takedown you just try to pull guard by like jumping on the guy and then leaning backwards and he just kind of falls forward on you he did that with frankie uh not frank Hager, but uh cub swanson he jumped guard but then got him in a guillotine and just tweaked his neck. Standing so, up. Wasn't he standing, standing up for that? It was a that? standing guillotine. Oh, but, yeah. but with uh, Max Holloway, he was just trying to get him get him to the ground any way he could. He was desperate. That was the desperation move. But no no quitting him. And like I said, when Max got... He, he didn't get rocked, like rocked, almost KO'd. But he got his knees buckled. I know what that feels like. And he stood right there when he did it. He just went... He, I mean, he was he was showboating a little much, but it was just it was it was it wasn't too much. It was it was entertaining as hell. He has a win streak. He's like twenty six. He's got like a crazy win streak too, Max Holloway. Yeah. And Ortega did too until this fight. I think he had a 12, 
12 fight win streak or something. This great is a fight. great, great, great fight, fight for pay per view. This is great a great fight. main event. What did you think about Ortega's corner? The doctor came in and stopped it. So props to the doctor for stopping this fight. I think he should have. But, but before the doctor stops a fight, there's an opportunity for a ref to stop a fight, for a corner, corner to stop a fight, for a fighter to be like, I'm done. On this the doctor's fight, kind of the last. This is, I, I kind of look at the doctor as kind of the last well, yeah. line of defense to like protect this fighter from going back out there. Right, and that's 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 true. And I have stopped fights where the even the doctor said it's you can let it go on. <laughs> but so I am I, I lean towards stopping it before the doctor. I've never had a doctor stop it before me. But with that said, I don't know if I would have stopped this fight. To be honest, I would have let him go out on his shield. I didn't think he was hurt. I think the eye was terrible, but I didn't think he was. I never saw him rocked. I never saw his brain in any kind of, uh, in any kind of uh, danger. I, I I think that I was really bad, but I think weighing everything, I think he would have. It would have meant more to him to just go out and let the ref stop it. Um, and and I don't think I don't know if I would have stopped in the corner. I might have. Depending I think you on- would have. I think you would have seen that there was no way he was gonna win. He was so tired. Why let this guy go and take more I damage? Yeah. I, I see there that. There was side. no way he was going to win. Max Holloway still looked awesome. Yeah. That fourth round was the beat down round. The other rounds before that, you kind of thought, well, Ortega could win. He could pull a submission or it, do something. But after that fourth round, there's no way he would have won in a yeah. fifth round. I so, don't think. I, anything can happen in fighting, but. I think you would have been sending him back out to just and take that's true. more And, and, and 99.9% of the time, or 120% of the time, because it's much more than the corners or even the ref, I would have stopped at first. But I, it depends on, it would have depend on the response I got from my fighter. If my fighter was that gung-ho to go out and all I saw was a bad eye and exhausted and he really wanted to go out that bad, I might have let him. It, it, being a title fight... Uh, pay-per-view main event um, I might have and I might not have it, it would have all depended it would have been dependent entirely on his response to me when I said when I would say I would ask him a question not, not, you know I don't know what it would have been but the response I got would have decided I think whoever fights Max next watches this fight 10 times and it's like well, how do we pick this guy's game apart like what do you how do you beat Max Holloway now after watching that fight, because I think Brian Ortega is, is a multi-dimensional fighter. He brought a lot to the fight. You know, he's obviously has striking and the ground game. I think he brought a lot to challenge Max. But what does the next fighter have to do? Like, what if Max fought Khabib? I mean, I don't think I don't think it wouldn't be as exciting as this fight. No, and I don't think Brian has. I think he's he's an up and coming guy, young guy. But I don't think he has the takedowns that a lot of the guys have, especially Khabib. And I don't think he has the striking as a lot of the guys have. Um, but he does have good striking, not great striking. He has great, great, great submissions, and he wasn't able to use them. If he had better striking, um, and it was, it was more on par with Max, then we would have seen. Um, and if he had really good takedowns, then it could have been a different fight. He has good takedowns, good striking, great submissions, Max has great striking, great takedown defense. So it, it kind of made for a, I'm, it's going to be, this is going to be a stand up fight. But he, he got him to the ground, I think, two, maybe three times, and Max popped right back up. Right. So, I think a fight between Max and Khabib would not be an exciting fight, probably. As a, it would have the potential to be not get to see Max have his game. Or what if Max fought Connor? I mean, that would be. Yeah. They're in their different weight classes, but they're only ten pounds apart. Yeah. Well, their first. I don't fight, know who the Max first is. fight was. Pretty. The first well, fight. I think that was Max's last loss. Yeah, and it was it was one of his first fights. What a great it. fight that would be to promote! I think. Between, I think. It would be a more exciting fight to see Connor fight. And I Max think Holloway. there's no way Max should go up to one fifty five right now, unless he can't make forty five. He's a young guy, so that's the only way. I don't think he should do it for fights. I think he should. Go stay at forty five for a while and just rule it, and then go up when he starts gaining weight, or if there's like a multi million dollar fight. I don't think I didn't see any footage of Max having a trouble making weight or getting on a scale looking weak or. Well, that's that's. I, what, I think he looked all right, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, but that's what 
they were saying kind of hampered his health, right? Well, I think he had a fight before where he, he was going to... He didn't make weight for 155 or something. There was something where he, he was having trouble with weight. Yeah. So, but... He did okay this time. He did this did, did okay this time. All right. So, so great fight. Be, Max's next fight is going to be... You know, I'm sure it'll be on a pay-per-view and it draw a lot of attention. Yeah, definitely. Then we got Val- Val- uh, Valentina against Joanna. This fight, this fight proves something to me that I've always said, and it was like perfectly, it was like perfectly shown. It was like proven in this fight. Um, conditioning make can make it or break it. Conditioning is as important, as important, and that's why it should be trained for all martial arts. All martial arts schools should train their conditioning, not not like farm it out to 24-hour fitness or Gold's Gym. It should be part of your curriculum because it is as much of a martial art technique as as a strike or a takedown or a takedown defense. Um, you saw just she, she out everything, Joanna, for the first three rounds, just out everything. She out hustled her, out struck her, out kicked her, out punched her, out... Out tick her down, out everything. She just proved she was far superior in everything. Some of it might have to do with the weight. I mean, let's not forget, Joanna came up to that weight. So that that might have had something to do with it. Who knows? Did but, Valentina also came down to that weight, didn't she? No. I thought she did. I think she's a 125-er. Okay. Yeah, but... Um, but, but after the third round... The conditioning of Joanna stayed up here, and and Valentina's came down here. So the skill level of Valentina's went down here, and the skill level of Joanna's went up here. I don't know who won the third round. It was pretty close, but it definitely wasn't as dominant by Valentina. And the fourth round, I think think, uh, Joanna won, and it was entirely on conditioning because everything else was the same. She didn't hurt uh, Valentina. There was nothing else that changed. So when all other things are equal, conditioning will make the difference. And even if things are superior on one side, if somebody's conditioning is far above the other one, doesn't matter how much better technically they are, uh, the conditioning can win out. And that has to be remembered in a martial arts school. Conditioning should be part of your curriculum. Not not farmed out at twenty four hour fitness. Every one of your your martial artists that should be part of their class. It should be part of it, just as much as a left hook or a double leg. What do you think about that fight? Yeah, well, five rounds. They, I mean, that was a, a probably a grueling fight for both of them. It was a grueling fight, and but she, it, they had fought before three times in kickboxing. In kickboxing, and yeah, Valentina won all those also. Yeah. Um, I just thought she was more the more skilled fighter. She more, at, and at she everything. won four out of the five rounds. I think because yeah. the decision came down yeah. across the board. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, Joanna Joanna's still she's on a losing streak, and shouldn't she lose the rose a couple yeah, times in a row? Yeah, but I think if she goes back down to fifteen, she'll be fine, and and she'll 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 um, she'll be up there. She might not be a champion again, or she might, but she'll definitely be up there. I mean, she lost to Valentina, but I mean. Valentina is, is freaking good. I mean, she's she is like who's beating her? Who's beat her? I mean, she's unbelievable. So I th- I really like watching her fight. She's probably her and Amanda are probably the two females I like to watch the most. But anyway, <laughs> then we got the cowboy, the other cowboy, the other cowboy, uh, Oliveira. Ale- um, he fought uh, Gunnar Nelson. Oh, shit. That was brutal. <laughs> well, uh, Oliveira got warned for a fence grab. Let me tell you about the fence grab. It saved him from hitting the ground. If referees, I, I don't know the exact rules, but I think you can do this. He grabbed the fence. It protect, It saved him from going down. So you see that ref. 
you not only take his hands away uh, from the from the they reposition the him back against the fence again. Right. You should you should reposition him to the ground because that's where it would have gone. Yeah. That's you a, have to you have to do that because that that's that 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 took a a takedown away from Gunner. I mean, Gunner would have had that takedown. It would have ended up on the ground. So if he would have, if you st- if you started it back standing and he got KO'd, then I think you did him a, a severe disservice. But then again, I'm not 100% sure, I'm going to ask Big John, uh, what that ruling is. Um, but it definitely, sh- common sense says, if the guy saves himself from hitting the ground by grabbing the fence and the referee stops it, repositioning should start on the ground with the with the guy that doing the takedown on top. The ref should err on the side of the guy that didn't commit the foul. Yeah. <laughs> so he shouldn't err on the side of the guy that grabbed the fence and put him back up. Yeah. So that was definitely going to be a takedown. Yeah, that would have so been. Oh, I, I, I didn't even think of that. That's a great idea for the ref is you, you stop it. If you're not going to take a point, uh, either that or you take a point shouldn't and do whatever you point. want. Yeah. If you're not going to take a point, I agree with you. Put him on the ground where that... Give him the advantage on the ground. Because I think one time, if it's the first time, then I don't think you should ever take a point away for that unless you, like, go up to the guy and, like, headbutt him like that. But I don't think something like grabbing the fence, which is very innate. You just, I mean, a lot of people. It's reflexive. Yeah. So I don't think the point should have been taken away, but you should definitely put it back down to a superior position for the guy who got robbed of the takedown, which was Gunner, because we saw what happened when he did get the takedown. Yeah, I, I, I grabbed oh. the fence too. Oh shit! If <laughs> yeah, he, I would grab the fence. Hindsight was twenty twenty. <laughs> I'd and, take the point. Oh, shit, I would take ten <laughs> points before that. That was such a brutal beatdown. For anyone that didn't see it, man, oh, it was. God. Was he mounted? He got yeah. Cowboys on the bottom yeah. and took an elbow to the forehead. Oh god, it was like that. Ugh. There was a, that was acute blood loss anemia. I think it was, was it was a... pulsating out like it hit an artery or something. I was pulsing. Out. That's the most blood I've seen come out of someone at once in fighting. That was, was like Marvin disgusting. Eastman when he fought. Uh, I forget who Marvin Eastman fought when he got that same thing, and it was like t- from here to here, Marvin Eastman is like hanging open. And, the forehead and, is uh, very well vascularized. I think if you're trying to win anyone over that thinks fighting's kind of brutal, do not show them that fight because that fight was, that was horror show brutal. Yeah. And that was like an instant, st- I mean, they let it go, but he was bleeding so much. I could see how that doctor or someone would just stop the fight. I mean, it didn't go on much longer. If it no. went on much longer, someone would have stopped it. It's like if you poke your finger with a needle and then you squeeze it and the blood comes up to there. That's what happened. When he got his arm around him to choke him, it like pushed all the blood out here. And it was like, it was like a fucking hose. It was like, shh. It was brutal. It was brutal. So and- I think the ref, even before he tapped to the rear naked choke, because Cowboy tapped out to the rear naked yeah. choke. I think before he even tapped, I think the ref was stopping it because of, of the amount of blood. It was yeah. really bad. And it's he's so amazing. Anemic. They put a towel out, it stops. He was the, he's anemic. He would have been anemic. <laughs> he maybe had a blood transfusion. He was definitely anemic. in the hospital getting a lot of stitches. Uh, that was brutal to see. I mean, it's yeah. more of a spectacle. I you know, I, Hopefully he wasn't, he didn't have a head injury other than the skin, but... Um, but that's, that'll stop a fight. And if you want to stop a fight in the street, I'm sure that would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's one of the things about elbows. That's why in amateur MMA, you can't do elbows, not because they're more dangerous than, than punches because they're not at all. In fact, a punch will cause much more brain damage than an elbow, but the elbows, especially on the the head and the face cause cuts. A lot of people will get, uh, in a, in, in a kickboxing match or an MMA match, a lot of times they're throwing that elbow to cause a cut, especially in kickboxing. They'll stop it a lot quicker than they do in MMA, but to cause a cut. They're, they're, they're doing it to cause a cut a lot more than they are just to cause pain or, or knock the guy out. So and sometimes I think almost that elbows shouldn't be allowed in certain positions just because to me it's not a it's not like a cheap win, but it's like kicking the front leg where you're trying to like hurt his knee where that's like what is that doing? Why don't you just kick him in the balls then? Well, the the other interesting thing I forgot was I think in the post fight interview Gunner said 
you know, Alex elbowed me right in the back of the head. Yeah, he there did. was another like pseudo foul yeah. where maybe he got elbowed right in the back of the head. And I think the whoever was interviewing said, "No, I think he hit you behind the ear." But I think there was that, like that is, that twelve is, to six. That is the back of the elbow. <laughs> that is the back of the head. Yeah, I don't know. So if it's behind the so ear, so anything behind the ear yeah. is the back of the head. So if the, if the referee or the guy said that, like, yeah, I think it was Joe Rogan or whoever was interviewing him said that. Yeah, he did hit you. See, and Gunner said, "Yeah, I'll go back and look at the footage." It didn't really matter. No, but the elbow to the front of the head that caused gushing amounts of blood. Okay. The elbow to the back of the head, not it makes, okay. It makes no sense why that's such a the rule. There is a rule, but it doesn't make any sense because the back of the head doesn't isn't any worse than the front of the head. Except you could say, well, then you're starting to get to the you know the 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 base of the skull and the spinal cord. Okay. Well, there are important your spinal cord and your brain stem keep you alive. The front of your brain is just your personality. Right, but it shocks you back. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, no, it, yeah. it does. So and then and then there's the fact that your throat is right here and could kill you really, really. I mean, if it you hit hard enough in the, the throat, but the chin's open all day long and it's right there. So the back of the head one never really I never really understood it, but whatever. Um brutal elbow to the front of the head, and that was a good stoppage for the Icelandic guy. Yeah, it was. That yeah. was a dramatic stoppage. Yeah. I don't know who won bonuses, but he should have got a performance bonus. Got her. Yeah. That was impressive. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was. It was like, it was like beautiful work. It was like bang, bang, bang. It was like he was just like, he was, he was, like an artist the way he worked. I really thought it was great. Then we got uh, Hakeem. Um, Dawoodu. Dawoodu and uh, Bochniak. Boch, um, this was like a, a, a really good, um, highly touted kickboxer in Hakeem against a really tough guy in, in Kyle. Um, it showed, it, I mean, it showed it was a decision. Um, I think it was a split decision. I think someone found, uh, yeah. I think this yeah, was, was the fight that was, was a split was. decision, which was kind of, yeah. I think, controversial. I don't think it really was a split decision, but... I think I think Kyle's lateral movement thwarted most of Hakeem's dangerousness, and he didn't he he never really hurt him. He's, it was like it was a point fight, and and I think Kyle did a really good job in staying out of the way with his lateral movement. He, I mean, he basically robbed Hakeem of really showing off any of his real skill, but while doing that, he was doing it so vigorously his lateral movement. He wasn't able to mount any offense of a, of his own, so it it was definitely not a, the greatest fight. So yeah, go. the only thing I remember from that fight was Kyle grabbing his pants the whole fight. Yeah, like all five he, rounds. He like grab, kept grabbing the front leg of his pants, like it was too tight to kick or something. But I think it, yeah, it was just a weird it thing. A, he kept, yeah. I think he was distracted, and that that does kind of put your guard down constantly. When you're doing that, it's grabbing your pants during a fight is probably not the best defensive strategy. Yeah, <laughs> probably it not. It was weird. So, first fight was brutal, and that was uh, I think it ended in the second round. Second round knockout. Oh my god! So this is Jimmy Manuel and Tiago Santos, Santos oh the god. sledgehammer. I think his nickname means sledgehammer. the sledgehammer, which is well earned. Oh my god, he hits the both of them. Both of them, okay, if any of you guys out there remember boxing, old school boxing, um, you remember Mike Weaver. Mike Weaver, Hercules, they call him, because he had like a Hercules build. But he would either knock you out or get knocked out. I think his record when he won the title was 10 and 10, all 20 fights by knockout. <laughs> he lost 10 by knockout, he won, something like that. But he just hit so hard and he did, had no defense. These guys are the same. They just hit so hard. You watch the replay oh, of the knockout, and it's haymakers. It's just yeah, that's all no defense, just full-on swinging for the fences. The only defense that was mounted by Jimmy Manoa, which saved him from being KO'd in the first round, was a really tight clinch. He would just hang on for dear life. He had him in a clinch. He wasn't trying to take him down. He wasn't trying to get some uh, set up a tight clinch. All he was trying to do was clear his head. And that's what you got to do when you get rocked like that. You have to clear your head. And there's only two ways to do it. Either 
get on your bicycle and just start basically running around the cage or the ring or get in for a quick clinch. You see it in boxing. They do it a lot. They get in a clinch when they get rocked or they back up and they they start they get on their bicycle. Jimmy Manoa doesn't have a bicycle. Either does Thiago Santos. All they have is one gear and that moves forward. So he's either going to knock you out moving forward, get knocked out moving forward, or run into a clinch to try to clear his head because he's probably he's probably uh, rattled a lot the way he fights. He, these are he probably gets tagged a lot. I know Thiago does. I mean, both these guys. Well, and Jimmy had his moments where he yeah. where he got uh, Thiago Santos with some good shots. He did. So for me, if you watch this light heavyweight guys at two hundred five. They have cannons. I mean, yeah. it's it's basically the record doesn't seem as important as a guy that fights at 155. Because you fight at 205, you can just get caught by one punch and have a loss on your record. Whereas that doesn't happen at, and maybe unless you're fighting Connor, that doesn't happen at the lower weight classes. Like you see this fight with Holloway and Ortega, one punch, someone catching with a punch, the fight's not going to be over. So for me, that's a little less. Yeah. Uh, let the skill. I don't know, the skill means a little bit less at that high level because you have some losses and maybe you just get caught. I don't know. It's yeah. such a different game at 205 than at 145. It's The fighting is so different. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, and then, obviously, heavyweight's even more than that. But then when you go down to, I think, 170 and 185, you have the best of both. So you have complete knockout power still. But you have more speed and accuracy and, and 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 agility, and then when you get to one fifty five and below, you have more speed and agility, but not quite the knockout power. So not usually, I think one eighty five might be like. Is that your favorite or where the? No, but that's where that's not not my favorite. I, my favorite would be two hundred five or one forty five for whatever reason. But I think I think uh, I think one eighty five. You, you is still knockout. You still have one punch knockout, um, but you but you also have a lot of speed and and and, and agility. So but then you the, get down to the really the mighty mouse weight class. What is, what's the name of their his weight class? Flyweight. The flyweights, and I think they're less popular because they're yeah. just they don't do the damage. They can run around really fast, yeah. but that one punch damage isn't there. So there's certainly I think there's a sweet spot. Yeah, and it's more in the middle. Yeah, you see, you people see want big... to see it. People want to see the knockout. Yeah, for me, I like to see the skill. Like I, the best fight of the night for sure for me was the main event. Yeah, because you just get to see that skill. It's not all over with one, one punch. You get to see Max Holloway's defense and how accurate his striking is, and then you get to see how important his cardio is. A lot more comes into it than these huge guys that just swing for the fences. And it's like, well, who's gonna hit who first? Yeah, one of those. and it's gonna be it's gonna be um, for the lighter guys. They really have to hit the chin for the knockout. Where the bigger guys, they can just hit anywhere above the neck. And because the, well, and that's a good point. Whether you're one thirty five or you're a heavyweight, you get the same brain, and the same protection of for your brain. Other than neck strength, yeah. which is controversial, may have something to do with your ability to absorb a strike. Yeah, your skull is the same. Your brain is the same. You get your light switched off the same. But the big guys just are able to do it so much easier. Yeah. So. I've, I've always said that when people say, and when people use the neck thing, it's like, wait, but your neck doesn't it doesn't really come into play much. Well, I think if you can absorb some of the, so your head doesn't get snapped, I think your neck has something to do with it. I think if the neck, like if you have more flexibility, but guys with bigger necks, they build up their neck for wrestling, but then that neck, so when they hit, all the force goes from there instead of, Instead of being as 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 agile and and as as the you know the the solid neck isn't going to move as much. That's good, because it's the movement of your head striking your brain that shuts right. out the lights. But also, so, so but it, also if it doesn't and it just all the fist, then that that force is going to bring. Well, maybe you can break your jaw easier, but if you have a stronger neck, more of that force is going to go through your neck to your body and get absorbed by your body. Where if you just turn your head like a bobblehead, you're going to get knocked out. So I think, and we learned that from car accidents where people hit the windshield or whatever happens, your brain gets bruised not only on the front when you hit the windshield, but on the back when it, your, your brain hits your skull. 
Yeah. So it's that it's your skull hitting your brain that causes a lot of the damage. So I don't know. I think people certainly work on neck strengthening, don't they? Yeah, but that's boxers more, do. They they do, but they they work more for um, you know they they want it to be more flexible and agile, and they want it to be more. Uh, you know, because they're moving a lot. A lot of guys are moving with the punch too. To 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 and, avoid the punch. And then in wrestling, it's the take, it's the the guillotines and the chokes, and you want to have more of a solid neck. So I think it should be somewhere in the middle. But I definitely think if your just head just doesn't move as much, um, I mean, it's like if somebody if somebody went to break the 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 bricks, right, and it's right there, the brick is going to break. But then if the, if it moves a little. You, you're not able to break the brick as much. So I think there's a lot to do with both of that. So I think you need supple power, uh, pu- supple strength in your neck, but you don't, a wrestler, you don't want to have a wrestler's neck if you're, uh, if you're in a striking game, but you definitely want to have some neck strength in case you get choked. So, so good fights good pretty fights. much most of the way through. Yeah. It's a good pay-per-view. Yeah, it um, was. What's coming up? What we got coming up? What we got coming up? What's um, coming up for fights? Um, upcoming, we got okay. That's it. That's interesting. Kevin uh, Lee, yeah, against the Quinta number two. A Quinta won the first one. Jones versus Gustafsson. I just, I don't, I'm not getting jazz for that. Um, I just not. <laughs> but, but I am for more for a, a Quinta versus Lee, and then, I right, then we got, uh, you know, Cejudo against Tillashaw. That should be fun. So what are they going to fight at? 135? Um, Still is yeah. not going to go down to 135 to flyweight? I don't think so. I think so who's the champion? Yeah. This so, is champion so, versus champion so fight. Is Dil- so is Dillashaw. Yeah. So what what are they fighting for? Yeah, uh, I don't even know. I don't know. Catch so, me. And then we got what we got to be to be and now to be yeah. Gaslam versus Whitaker. That'll this be is fun. all next year sometime. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. I'll be in Hawaii for that this one. Is, <laughs> I don't know. This was a good one. Yeah, it was good. And then, uh, so anyway, share us, guys. Share this, please, because we need more followers. As good as this is, you guys are getting high level entertainment, education. You got a doc and, and, and a world renowned trainer. So, can you please? Do I sound conceited? You got yeah, you got a doc, and then I got a world round chair. I, yeah, I think you're right. I'm playing down the doc. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> no, it's good. Okay, no, but that, at least I'm gonna say I've got a nurse, and then uh, but anyway, we've got what we do. We have a nurse, a male yeah, nurse, nice. and we have an orthopedic what, surgeon. What a male nurse? What is it, what am I a female all of a sudden? Of course, I'm a male nurse. I'm a male. Whatever I do, I'm a goddamn male. But anyway, thanks for coming, guys. Please uh, subscribe and. Share this because I think we think everybody should watch it. And if there's anything you want to see, even if you want a medical, you get free medical advice right here. You can ask them anything. Even you can even ask us relationship advice. Thanks for coming, guys. All right, John. See you next week.